Here's our 10th example of how we use a conservation of energy to solve a problem that otherwise would be a lot more difficult to solve. So here we have a skier on an interesting hill. It's, a, it's like a, a semi-dome, or I guess it would be a dome, not a semi-dome, but a dome-shaped uh, uh, ski hill. There's no friction because you know, snow is very slippery. The skier starts skiing down, but at some point the skier will begin to leave the hill and go in a straight line path dictated by Newton's first law. And of course, since there's gravity, it'd actually be more like a, like a um, uh, what we call a projectile path. But that's okay. At some point, the skier will leave the hill, will leave the snow. And at what angle will that occur? So that's the question. At what point will the skier leave the hill? So we're going to start off by starting with the equation of energy. Energy initial equals energy final. So we call that the conservation of energy equation. Now we know that there might be some potential work input plus some potential energy initial plus some kinetic energy initial and that should equal the potential energy final uh, plus the kinetic energy final plus any energy loss due to overcoming friction. Now right away we can say since there's no friction here then we can call that zero and there was no work input call that zero as well. Now let's call this the zero height position. So this we're going to call h is equal to zero, which means that when the skier gets to the point where he leaves the ski hill, there's no potential energy. So we can call that potential energy final. And then we assume that the skier starts with virtually no velocity at the top of the hill. So that means there's no initial kinetic energy as well. So this then becomes the potential energy initial equals the kinetic energy final. Now, how much potential energy does he have? Well, it's going to be against the ratio here. So it's going to be R, which is the radius of the, of the dome, minus Y. So this is mg times R minus Y. That would be the height relative to the zero height. And this is going to be equal to 1 half mv final squared. And of course, you see an m on both sides, so the m cancels. We do not need to know the mass. We do need to know what y is equal to. So notice that we have a triangle here. The radius is the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent side. So y is the hypotenuse times the cosine of this angle. So we could say that we get g times r minus, instead of y, we're going to write this as a hypotenuse r times the cosine of the angle via the adjacent side. So r times the cosine of theta. And that equals 1 half v final squared. And then we can pull out an R, we can factor out an R, we can put the two over here. So we have 2GR times 1 minus the cosine of theta, and that is equal to V final squared. So again, we get some familiar uh, things here. M notice that we have the 2GR or 2GH, that's a very familiar side. If we take the square root of both sides, we get that. If something was free falling this way, that would be the velocity here. But then we have to account for this right here. We have 1 minus the cosine of theta, and we don't know what theta is. So we then need to have some more information. Now notice that at this point, this skier is going along a circular path, which means that we expect to have some centripetal force in this direction. And notice that if I start with the force of gravity like this, and we we'll call this mg, then what would this quantity be, and what would this quantity be? So this is the um, parallel component of the weight and this is the perpendicular component of the weight and it's the perpendicular component of the weight that provides the centripetal force. Now you remember that the centripetal force, and let me use purple for that, force centripetal will be equal to mv squared over r and that will be provided by this quantity right here. Now notice that if the skier is on, on top of the hill right here close to the top this angle will be very small, and you can see that this angle will be very small right here. So then we realize that this angle theta here is the same as this angle theta here. Another way of looking at that is notice that these two lines are parallel, and this one cuts across both lines, and these are alternate interior angles. So another way of looking at it is that these alternate interior angles must be equal. All right, now the centripetal force is provided to us by this quantity right here, which should be mg times the cosine of theta because it's adjacent to the hypotenuse. Remember, this is going to be a right triangle like that. Okay, so we set that equal to this quantity right here, and what we get then is we get mg cosine theta is equal to mv squared over r. Notice that um, 
mg cosine theta is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as you skis further and further and further down the hill because the angle gets bigger. When the angle gets bigger, the cosine of theta gets smaller. So eventually, the mg cosine theta is not enough to provide the mv squared of r. At that point, the skier will leave the, um, uh, the hill. So we can set, if we set it equal to each other, that will be the very moment at which the skier leaves the hill. Now, what we can do here now is we can then plug in the v final from this in here and then we can solve for theta. So that's, the, that's what we're going to try and do. So first of all, we have an m on both sides, so that cancels out. We can move the r over here, so we have g r cosine of theta is equal to v squared. And if we then plug that in here, what we can then say is that on the left side we have 2g r times 1 minus the cosine of theta, and on the right side, instead of writing v final squared, we write it, we write g r cosine theta. And now we're going to solve this equation for theta, and that will give us the answer at what angle will the skier leave the hill. All right, I mean, right away we can see on both sides we have a g and an r, so those cancel out. Multiplying this times this, I get 2 minus 2 times the cosine of theta equals the cosine of theta. Bringing this to the other side, I have 2 is equal to 3 times the cosine of theta. Or if I divide both sides by 3 now, I get 2 thirds equals the cosine of theta, which means that theta is equal to the r cosine of 2 thirds. And with a calculator, that shouldn't be too difficult to figure out. 2 divided by 3 equals, and I'm looking for the r cosine. Sure enough, 48.2 degrees. So. When the angle gets to be 48.2 degrees, the skier will leave the ski hill and now become a projectile. And hopefully there's something soft to land, maybe a big pile of snow, so he doesn't get hurt. And that's how you do that problem.